first of all, there's three different courses. Um, the first course was designed to do, uh, well, was the original course. There was so much data and information that I couldn't teach in that one course that we said, well, why don't we teach another one? So that came, became part two course. There was so much other data and information to know that suddenly there became a part three course after the part one and part two. Typically, we see out of the part one course, probably 75% of those people that take part one will go on and take part two. 75% that take part two will go on and take part three because there's so much information learned and it's so much fun. It's basically just evidence-based medicine presented in a format that no medical academy does. There's just not a format set up for that. Uh, insofar as the popularity, many patients, many doctors will come back and take the part one course, second time, third time, fourth time. There's so much information and it's updated that they find it's so beneficial even to take the same course over again several times and same with part two and part three. So there's a lot of information and it's all evidence-based scientific review of the literature to look at what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing, what happens when you do this, what happens when you don't do that, what happens when you do this and the benefits of doing this. And that's pretty much showing and training the doctors as to what the science and the literature says. So the first day of it is all scientific evidence-based medicine looking at the literature. It's pretty didactic. The second day is case review, looking at levels, looking at case management, why do this, why do that, what happens when this happens, what happens when that happens. Um, what happens when you have a woman that comes in with severe PMS? Well, commonly doctors will prescribe antidepressants which work sometimes but not all the time and have terrible side effects associated with that. Using a very high dose progesterone in a certain way completely eliminates any PMS. We teach doctors how to do that. We teach them how to manage menopausal patients, perimenopausal patients, which are extremely difficult to manage. In perimenopause, actually instead of your estrogen falling down, it goes two to three times as high. We explain why that happens. And to counter that, you need higher doses of progesterone to counteract those side effects. If you give those women estrogen that have very, very high estrogen, they will have symptoms of too much estrogen. So perimenopause and premenopause and PMS and menopause are all treated differently, but we show them the nuts and bolts and explain why we use certain ones versus other ones to help treat those patients. But it's not just women's hormones that the course is all about. It's all about other health benefits to all of the hormones. All hormones have health benefits. When you lose those hormones, there's a health detriment associated with it. Nothing that happens in the body as we get older is beneficial for it. Losing the hormones is not beneficial for it. It's harmful in every hormone and in every study to date. Replacing those hormones has been shown to be beneficial. So we teach and train physicians how to do it, which ones to use, how to monitor it, how to adjust, how to troubleshoot it. What happens when you have a side effect from a little bit of testosterone in women? Well, you can use something to block that side effect. Um, what happens if they still have the symptom and you need to take more? Is it okay? Is it safe? Yes, the literature supports that. So it's sort of the nuts and bolts the second day of monitoring, adjusting, prescribing, and troubleshooting all the hormones in many different case scenarios so that they can go home and understand how to treat their patients on Monday morning uh, in ways that they have never learned before. And of course, the feedback from that is the patients see tremendous improvement. The patients say, what a change in their life. The physicians return to me and say, this has made such a change in the way I practice. It's so exciting. It's, you know, there's nothing that I've done in practicing medicine for 30 or 40 years that comes close to matching the beneficial effects as far as how people feel and function and restoring their health. But there's a long-term health benefit to it that is not provided by any other therapy that we have. But as far as patient feedback, patient satisfaction, um, there is nothing that we do other than hormone replacement that is showing such satisfaction in patients. We can fix their blood pressure, we can treat their diabetes, we can do the dermatology, we can take out the skin lesions, but they don't say, boy, that made me feel so good. The quality of life that is restored, and in all these articles that we prevent, present in our courses, have as the striking phrase that I always underline is improvement in quality of life. And you do that with all the hormones. Women will feel much better on thyroid. It took me a while to figure out why. They all did, but I couldn't figure out why. But the literature supports that, and my patients support that too. They feel so much better on this dose. Their physicians may not like that. Um, they don't understand why we do what we do. When you look at the literature and then look at the patient, and you'll understand why. Um, eliminating the side effects of the 
Synthetic hormones, they will feel and function so much better without the depression, the mood swings, and the bleeding, and the breast symptoms that they get on the synthetics. They say they feel tremendously better on their hormones that they're taking because now they feel better and don't have any side effects from them. Uh, women on testosterone, men on testosterone, um, I can't say enough about how they feel libido-wise, strength-wise, endurance-wise. Um, any man on testosterone says, boy, you've given me my life back. Um, it doesn't help their putting, but it'll help their drive distance. Um, but it also helps in, in other ways, too. It affects how we function in our sports. It affects how we function in our work. And the same with women. The, the two feel-good hormones primarily are thyroid and testosterone. And the accolades that we get from the patients are, you know, I will refer all my friends because I feel so much better and I want them to feel the same. Patients come to us and say, I got referred here by Susie, and I want you to make me feel as good as Susie does. Because I'm tired of listening to Susie as, as how good she feels. Um, Fred sends his buddy in because his buddy says, you know, things aren't well at home. Well, come on in, we'll put him on hormones, and I want you to make me feel just as good as Fred, and I want, you to, be, I want to feel as good as he does, but I want to function as well as he does in every way, shape, and form. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what happens is, yep, you're right, we feel much better, here's some more patients, I've got to bring all my friends in, I can't believe how much better I feel. So from a patient perspective, none of the other medicines or treatments that we give them will make them feel better. But from a physician standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, everything I do, based on the literature, improves their health and longevity. So it is a win-win for patients love it because they feel and function much better. I love it because in, in every situation with every hormone, there's literature support that it's so much better for their long-term health. It's really what preventive medicine is all about.